Joined now by a top member of the House Democratic leadership, it's Congressman Jim Clyburn. He's the House Majority Whip, and as I said, it actually is his job to know where every member stands on every single issue, at least the Democratic <laughs> side of the aisle. Congressman Clyburn, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. I don't know about every member, but I'm comfortable. <laughs> I hear you. I hear <laughs> yeah. you. Thank well, let you. me ask it this way. Um, if you did a secret ballot among the Democratic caucus, yes or no on impeachment, what would the majority likely be? Oh, the majority would be no. Uh, it's you not believe that? as big. Yes, I do. It's not as big a majority today uh, or yesterday as today, uh, but a majority uh, will be uh, for staying steady, staying focused, stay on what we're doing because this thing is moving in our direction. We've just seen uh, members or staff at the bank, uh, at a bank, Deutsche Bank, saying they saw irregularity taking place, and they were all for us uh, finding out about it. We know uh, that Amash has broken ranks. He's a, he's a Republican, irrespective of what they may think about him. He's broken ranks. We've got a court decision in our favor uh, right. that we did not have two days ago. And who knows what's to come next? Let's just stay steady, stay focused. This thing is moving in our direction. Let's not get in its way. What, um, what do you think Justin Amash is wrong about when he says he thinks it's time to open an impeachment inquiry and that impeachable, you know, that essentially perhaps crimes were committed? Well, time is a relative thing. It may be time, but not today. I think it's time for us to stay focused on this issue, keep what we're doing, keep doing it. And I think the American people are coming to the conclusion that this man thinks he's above the law and they don't like it. They know that he's covering up something and they want to find out what it is. They want us to do what is necessary to protect the integrity of this democracy, not to solve whatever may be uh, our itch uh, at this particular point. There is said, an itch in our yeah. caucus for impeachment, but let's not uh, deal with that yet. Well, well I, I guess here's, the, here's what's confusing, I think, to some, it, it, which is, <clears throat> what is the trigger then? You know, no one seems to know what is the trigger. When you seem to be describing, well, look, it looks like the line's going to get crossed and one day we're going to wake up and everybody's going to be in agreement that it's time to start the process. Look at what's happening already. Courts are slowly coming your way. Uh, Republicans coming your way. So you sort of see it as inevitable. I guess what is what is the trigger then? What do you what is this magic moment you're waiting for where you're just going to be like, aha, we're here? <laughs> Well, Chuck, I don't know if I know exactly what it is, but I do know that we will reach a point when we will say, now is the time. I don't think we've reached that point yet. Uh, it's almost like anything else. I may not know exactly what it is, but I think we'll recognize it when we see it. Is it just more defiance of subpoenas, more? I mean, is there just a point where after the fifth, 50th subpoena that they don't um, uh, uh, comply with. That's the, you, know, you see what I'm saying here? I think I some folks yeah. are looking for, okay, is there, is there a line in the sand that you're going to draw that the public knows about rather than sort of quietly waiting until they violate it? I don't know if we'll draw in the lines in the sand. I think we, the public will know and we will know. I really believe strongly that we should not run the risk of overlooking something, missing a step, uh, and having a court later say, why didn't you do this? It mm -hmm. was in front of you. Why didn't you file uh, some uh, objections? Why didn't you bring right. this person in? Why didn't you attempt to resolve this without clogging up the courts? And let's do that. All of us, I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that these are the kinds of things that we should try to resolve administratively, legislatively, and not do it judicially until it's absolutely necessary. And it's are not you, absolutely necessary yet. Are you concerned, though, that the White House is sort of using, 
your desire to sort of stay within the guardrails of political norms against you and in the entire, you know, they're going to defy everything. And they're, it, it defy, defy, defy. Part of it is just simply buying time. It looks to me as if they're just hoping at some point you guys decide it's just too close to 2020. We're going to, there's no way we can do this now. Are you at all concerned you're, you're sort of being played by the White House where they're just using a, they're trying to run out the clock here? Yes, I am a little bit concerned about that, but I'm even more concerned about the White House goring us into making a wrong step, doing something too quickly, doing something just to solve our own uh, consciousness rather than to lay the foundations that are necessary to be successful. I think people want this process to proceed in a way that will be successful rather than to make a headline, rather than making headway. And I think Bob, we're making a lot of headway. Bob Mueller, uh, apparently, according to reports, is hesitant to testify publicly because he doesn't want to be seen as a partisan player in all of this, however it will look like. Uh, what do you make of the request by Bob Mueller to do this privately? Do you think that is, I, I, you know, I understand his concern pro perhaps about his own political standing, is that a concern of yours? Yes, it is. But look, he is hesitant. And all of us can understand his hesitations. But he has not refused to testify. And if he is going to testify in private, it may be a good thing for us to lay down, sit down with him and to lay out uh, the process and what should be done with the information once it's gathered. So I don't know that we have to create a spectacle here. What we have to do is create a record. If we can get the record, get him on record saying yep. what we need, we don't have it. It doesn't need to be public. Just be on record. Is the, um, how much does the 2020 presidential election play into this in your mind? I mean, the timing, the calendar is the calendar, whether, and I understand you, you, you want to sit here and say, well, look, politics doesn't play a role. But the calendar has to matter here, does it not? Yes, it does. And I will never say that the politics uh, don't play a role in this. Yes, the politics are there. This is a political process. And I think all of us know that impeachment itself is a political process. And what we've got to do when it comes to politics is get it right. So if we're going to get to that point, let's move to that point with a solid foundation having been laid so that yeah. none of us will look back and say, I wish I had her and maybe I should have. We're not there yet. Let's not rush into this. If you thought impeachment was going to harm the Democratic Party's chances of defeating Donald Trump, would that make you hesitant to open an impeachment inquiry? Sure it would. I think that what we've got to do is win the election next year. But if we get to the point where we have got a record that shows that this man has done something untoward, he is attempted or even obstructed justice, he has covered up something, uh, he has taken money from someplace, that he has not uh, been transparent with it, yeah. I would be all for it. Because I really believe that if you got that kind of record, the American people uh, will reward us for being patient, being focused, and staying steady. I think that there's a reward in that as well. Does uh, tomorrow's uh, all caucus meeting with House Democrats, um, how much room do you think you have to sort of keep the impeachment uh, brigade uh, at bay here? Is it weeks? Is it, you know, do you feel like you can, you've got the rest of the summer, or do you feel like you have until, say, the end of the month? Well, I've said to some of my friends uh, earlier today that we're out of here next week. Let's hold. Let's go home for the Memorial Day holidays. Let's honor those who have done so much to put this country where it is today. Give them their proper respect. Talk to our constituents back home next week. Yep. And then let's make an assessment when we get back in the week afterwards. Right. And maybe it'll be time then for us to do something different. 
but not yet. One quick 2020 question. How strong is Joe Biden in South Carolina? He's extremely strong in South Carolina. Uh, the poll that the state newspaper recently did shows him with a strong lead over everybody and with 52 percent of the African-American vote in the state uh, that is going to have a big African-American vote right. in the primary. So he is in a very strong place today. Where he will be tomorrow or the day after, uh, we'll have to see. Are you comfortable with Joe Biden? If he was the nominee, I know you're not endorsing until if you no. endorse at all, it won't be very close. Would you be comfortable with Joe Biden as the nominee? I, I, I'm very comfortable with several of the candidates. I just came out of a meeting uh, with Mayor Pete, uh, yeah. Buddha judge. Uh, I can't pronounce the last name. I think uh, you did a good job. It says a lot, actually. To me, if people can pronounce his name, they're thinking about supporting him. Anyway, go ahead, well, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, I was very comfortable with him. Uh, I think he's done a, a great job. I think Kamala Harris is doing great. Uh, Cory Booker, uh, I think that uh, Sanders uh, is doing uh, a good job. All the candidates are doing well. But in South Carolina, we won't get a chance to vote until the last Saturday in February. And yeah. I suspect by the time we get to that point, uh, things will be a little different than they are today. I think you, if history is any guy, you are going to be correct about that. Congressman Jim Clyburn, Absolutely. Democrat from South Carolina, sir, as always, thank you for coming on and sharing your views. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.